Hey, it's Morella Minnelli, and today I'm going to show you how to do a foliage technique specifically on somebody who has really dark pigmented hair and they want to go onto the lighter side but without being super blonde. And of course, I'm going to be using all Kenra color. Now let's go ahead and get started. My model is a natural level two. And as a matter of fact, it's been about eight months since she's gotten her hair done. I used her for another video, which was for some halo highlights on her really cute shag. And since then her hair has grown out really long and we have that nice virgin canvas towards the top and she's ready to go lighter, even with those highlights towards the bottom. And she would really love to finish it off with a wearable blush shade. And I'm even more excited to try out a brand new rapid toner shade that Kenra Professional just came out with. So we're going to be prepping her for a foliage technique and application. For this project, I'm going to be using Simply Blonde Beyond Bond Lightener at a 1 to 2 mixing ratio with 30 volume developer. And yes, I use a scale because this is how you're going to build consistency and predictability with the type of lift that you want because you know exactly the viscosity and the lift that you're going to get with the lightener to developer ratio. Now, because my model does have a natural level two version base, I am going to need to utilize foil for a nice lift. And the reason for that is foil is going to be your heat conductor and provide you a little bit of extra lift than if I were to do an open air technique. We are trying to create an overall look of dark into light, and we wanna make it look like she's been getting highlights for quite some time. And so I find the best way to do this is by alternating a teasy light into what could be a highlight or somewhat of a baby light. So all of the sections are going to be teased throughout. I do start out by horizontal sectioning towards the bottom because I want an overall just global brightness towards the bottom. And the way you're going to get that is by doing horizontal sections. Now you'll notice that I'm taking pretty wide sections here. So I start out by doing a zigzag section and the zigzag is going to give me a lot of seamless diffusion as I'm working and applying this lightener throughout her hair. And I'm taking this entire section here and I'm teasing the top and the bottom. And this technique works out really well because she does have a very grown out shag. So this is something to keep in mind if you are working on a client who has super healthy one length hair, this tease on top and bottom may not work with this thick of a section. You might have to take some smaller sections. The whole idea behind taking this large of a section and teasing the top and the bottom is this is going to recreate what would look like or appear to be some really grown out highlights. So this is why we're saturating those ends really really well using my power painter brush and then I'm stroking up my lightener so that way I create that dark into light along with the rooted effect from the T's. Now when I go through and take a smaller section here I'm going to use this Dreamweaver comb and this Dreamweaver comb is what's going to create some highlights for me. Now they do have different sizes I am using the wider or chunkier highlight version of this but I'm essentially taking this entire section and using this comb to create these highlights for me in addition to the coup board by pushing up those little baby hairs so that's what I like about this board is it is helping me tease up that hair without teasing it. So it's not a lot of detangling work for me. Now, something to note here is as I get to this occipital bone region, I am starting to bring the lightener up a little higher that's closer to the face and keep it a little deeper towards the interior. So this is really important because we need to still create depth, even though we're gonna essentially be putting almost all of our hair into a foil. If you want to create strong ribbons, you're going to need to have a lot more background involved. But if you want a lot of blend and a lot of blonding with not so much contrast, this is a great technique for you. But right when I get to this occipital region, this is where I'm going to start to change up my direction. I start to incorporate some V sections. So diagonal back sections or just diagonal sections in general, this is what's going to create a lot of diffusion as the hair starts to lay and veil over the head. So the position of how this hair is falling is really, really important. 
Painting hair in general is very visual. So this is why I like to look at how much depth I'm creating. So you can see I have a lot more depth towards the face. And this is where those ribbons of blonde are really gonna pop and show through. But I'm also creating a lot of depth by bringing the lightener down diagonally towards the center of the head. So this in general is going to give you the proper amount of background necessary. Plus another thing to keep in mind is that these are kind of like pizza slices. They're a little wider towards the ears and more narrow towards the interior. So this is another reason why you want to maintain that depth towards the center because there's a lot less hair in that subsection. Now something that I like to do to just kind of marry these sections together is I do a horizontal section, but right here, I'm doing those highlights. So I'm always alternating. I'm typically alternating from a sliced or zigzagged teasy light into these highlights. So even though these highlights are rooted, I am bringing the blonding pieces so much more higher up towards the root area. Now remember that the horizontal highlights is gonna give you a global amount of brightness throughout the back while these pretty deep teased slices back here that are also angled with a lot of depth are going to give me really beautiful ribbons, but it's gonna allow for those highlights to really kind of pop that are sitting right on top. Now you can alternate this type of technique. We can put the highlights towards the exterior with the balayage more in the interior. I mean, lots of different variations here, but really be purposeful and keep in mind the visual placement. So don't be afraid to kind of take a pause and take a look at how the hair is actually falling and exactly where you want those blonde pieces to live. Now, as I get closer towards the top, I am going to change the amount of sliced teases that I'm going to do just because I want there to be more highlight a little closer to her root. So this is just a really quick way and a quick application to get all of the hair in a foil literally with not as many foils as you think that you would actually need. But I also just in general want it to be a little blonder towards the top. So this is why I'm going to be doing a lot more highlighting still with this dream weaver comb and using the coup board. So you can see throughout this entire application, I am changing up how I apply my lightener and the type of weave that I'm utilizing as well. So I'm constantly changing this up because I want it to look as natural as possible, just like I mentioned earlier, like we've been doing highlights for quite some time. Now to finish off this entire back section, I finish it with a horizontal section and I am gonna bring that entire lightener all the way up, but this is a surface paint into a saturated paint. This is how every single one of my sections was applied. So making sure to really saturate those mids and ends and even pushing the hair side to side. Saturation is key with any type of foliage technique, especially if you're using a board. However, if you feel like you need to use your hands like I did for this particular section, cause it was a little thick, I did throw on some gloves and just made sure to really saturate and work it through. So that's totally okay if you feel like you need to throw on these gloves and really work it through. So that way you can make sure you have the proper amount of saturation because an uneven application is gonna give you a spotty lift and we do not have time for that. Now for the sides, I start out by doing diagonal backs and I'm taking an entire section here and teasing it. Generally with my brunettes, I don't put too much attention with adding in a lot of highlights right around the hairline, unless their end result and goal is to be really blonde. This particular model just wanted a little bit of brightness and we wanted to maintain the depth around her face. And the way I like to explain this is the hair around your face is basically a frame to a picture. So because we're leaving her root area very natural and really dark, plus she has pretty dark eyebrows, we're gonna keep all of that hair around that hairline pretty deep. So I wanna maintain that depth. And the way that I'm going to do that is by alternating those TZ light slices and those highlights. But you can even see here as I start moving up towards the head, that diagonal back starts to soften as well. And I'm actually gonna finish in a horizontal section, again, giving me that global 
brightness that I'm looking for because naturally that's how her hair falls towards the top of her head. So overall, if you're trying to create a lot of diffusion and a natural hairline towards the face, consider taking some sectionings that are like little pizza slices or a fanned sectioning. So making it a little wider towards the interior and a little bit more narrow towards the front. So start off going diagonal back and then finishing horizontal. Now, once I have both sides done, this leaves her fringe area for last. And again, I want to keep the frame around her face really dark. So I'm not gonna highlight right on the underside. I'm gonna highlight right on top. I want there to be that background so that way the color and the highlights that we're applying, they're really going to show and pop. For the application in the fringe area, I started out by doing a pretty simple weave, but I am taking the lightener pretty much all the way to the root, but I take my brush a little bit more angular or vertical, so that way I'm creating a little bit more of a softer line of demarcation, which is gonna be perfect for when it grows out. And then I'm just gonna add in a few little slices here, again, taking the lightener pretty close to the root, but still feathering by putting my brush vertical and really saturating those mids and ends. So this is all about just pretty much getting a nice even lift. So that way the color that we're going to finish her with is really going to stand out. I'm super excited to show you what it's gonna look like, especially on this dark of a canvas. Because she had such a heavy fringe, I ended up adding in four foils throughout this top section. And then I allowed her to process for about 30 minutes before checking her foils. But overall, I want you to take a look here on exactly the placement of the foils, especially on the sides. You can really see how it starts to kind of fan out. You can see how they're slightly diagonal towards the bottom and they finish off horizontal. This is very important for this placement and technique that I'm showing you. So after about that 30 minute mark, I went ahead and checked her foils in the back and I decided to start removing her lightener because you can see we had a really great, beautiful lift. And as a matter of fact, I decided to pop on these bleach blenders so that way I could go ahead and remove the lightener. Now I like to just remove the lightener and also blend it in and just let it dry out. This is the best way to go ahead and let the whole process of stopping the lightener from lifting is by just removing it and letting it dry out because lightener that stays hydrated is going to continue to lift. And this is kind of where I stopped and I allowed it to go ahead and let it process a little bit more just because I saw too much warmth going on. Once she was done processing, I decided to mix up a color melt formula using five NUA in Demi Permanent. And I mixed that up one to two with its dedicated nine volume developer. And then I mixed up a brand new shade that I'm so excited about. It is the Rose Violet Rapid Toner. And it's a rapid toner that processes in five minutes or less. So I'm gonna be blending this from a 5NUA super cool formula to help neutralize a lot of those warm tones and blend in to her that natural level two that she's got going on. And I'm gonna blend that right into a gorgeous rosy shade that's going to look amazing once we're all done. Now I did apply all of the Demi Permanent on damp hair and I'm pretty much just applying this about a half an inch closer to the top of her head and then bringing that five anyway down about a couple inches down. And then once I get this applied, I'm going to comb it through and then allow it to just process for about 10 minutes before applying my rapid toner shade. Now there's lots of different ways that you can use a color melt formula but for this particular model, I decided to use 5NUA because it is natural ultra ash and it's going to be dark enough for it to look like a very subtle brown highlight towards the top or any of those highlight pieces that we got closer to the root area. It's going to tone them out seamlessly. And then after that 10 minute mark, I applied that rose violet rapid toner. Now, something to keep in mind with the rapid toner is it does process differently and deposit differently on different levels of hair. So just kind of keep that in mind. This is on a level eight canvas. So rapid toner works best on levels eight and above. 
If I had lifted her to a level nine or even 10, the rose violet shade would come out so much more pink. But I love how the end result, like you'll see a little later, looks super bronzy and slightly blushy pink. So once I got that rapid toner on, I only processed her for five minutes, room temperature, and then took her back to the shampoo bowl, did a thorough rinse, and I did shampoo her out just because we used such a dark color melt formula, and I used Lux shampoo from Kenra Professional, and took a generous amount, really worked it in just to kind of, again, break up that root area. I didn't really bring it down towards the end so much. It was more to just rinse out and shampoo any dye that may have gotten on her skin. And then I rinsed that out and then finished her with one of my favorite treatments right now. It is the Rapid Hydration Mask in Rich. Now they do have one for fine hair as well, but this model had pretty coarse hair. So this is the perfect three minute treatment. The hair feels so luxurious and soft, super hydrated. Then I took her back to my chair and finished her off with blow dry spray, just a few pumps of that. So this has argan oil and evaporative silicone to kind of speed up that blow dry time. And then I layered in smoothing blowout lotion because she does have a little bit of texture kind of going on. Between these two products on her damp hair, it's going to drastically reduce the amount of frizz, and it's also gonna give me a nice foundation to work with when I'm doing any type of round brushing. And I start out by just rough drying her, and then once I have her about 80% dry, I go through in sections and using one of my favorite round brushes. And then once she's all set, I'm going to layer in another one of my go-to products the Kenra Platinum Silkening Heat Cream. So I love this because you apply it on dry hair and it's a great product for flat ironing or for adding in some really gorgeous large curls. So just keep in mind this product does not have any hold to it, but it does have the best thermal protection in a cream form out there and it's perfect for this really large two inch T3 curling iron. Once her curls were cooled, I used texturizing taffy and I didn't show it because I forgot to record it, but I love this product for reducing flyaways and just adding a little bit of pieciness. And here is the final result. Here's her before and her after side by side. I'm totally obsessed with this application. Like I mentioned, it looks like she's been getting highlights done and it has a very rooted look. So this is gonna last her for a super long time. It's gonna be very low maintenance, but we have a gorgeous dark into light blend, finishing it off with a really beautiful blushy tone. This rose violet rapid toner I'm totally obsessed with. This is definitely a Morella shade. If you've watched any of my videos, you know I love everything pink. So I just love how this pinky tone reflects off of this brunette canvas. Just to give you a little recap on the color that I used, everything Kenra Professional, of course, and I used Simply Blonde Beyond Bond Lightener at a one to two mixing ratio with 30 volume developer in a foliage technique. And then I processed her for a total of 40 minutes and then did a color melt using all Demi Permanent of five NUA on damp hair at a one to two mixing ratio with nine volume developer. And then I blended that right into the brand new rapid toner shade Rose Violet at a one to two mixing ratio with nine volume developer. In total, the five NUA was on her roots for about 15 to 20 minutes. And then the rapid toner, as soon as it was done being applied, I only processed it for five minutes room temperature and then finished her off with all of my favorite Kenra Professional styling products. I would love to know what you think about this color and this look, so please comment down below. And then here's a really quick shot of the underside so you can see how much depth we maintained so that way all of those highlights could really pop and veil right over her head. In total, this look took about six hours from start to finish, including a little shaping and style. And I will see her back in about eight to 12 weeks for a simple glaze using the brand new Rapid Toner Rose Violet for just five minutes. 
So I really hope you enjoyed this hair tutorial, and if you did, please give this video a thumbs up, make sure to subscribe, and be sure to check out my other hair tutorials right here on this channel, and I will see you in the next video.